this is my talk. Stop making computer games, make bots instead. Uh, so I'm George Buckingham. I'm V21 on Twitter, pretty much everywhere else as well. Um, so I'm from video games. I've worked in video games for years. I've yeah, worked at a bunch of studios. I've worked on indie games. Um, I've worked with Martin Hollis, uh, who, made, who was the director on uh, GoldenEye. I worked on, uh, with Keita Takahashi, who made Katamari's Embassy. I'm just boasting here, sorry. Um, <laughs> I exhibit this stuff around the world. I'm talking of video brains. You know, I'm from the games. Okay, that, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make here. But I have a message for you about video games. They're rubbish. <laughs> People should be making bots instead. So, like, what is a bot? I hear you not actually asking. This is a kind of example of a bot. What's this a bot? is. I said, I already, we already covered that, okay. <laughs> this is a bot, this is a bot. So, it's a, so the thing I'm talking about specifically here are Twitter bots. So uh, Twitter accounts that tweet automatically, there's a script sitting on a server somewhere and that's what's running them, not a human being with a phone or a piece of technology or a computer. So this is a bot called uh, Venga Boom. Every two minutes, it tweets a line from the song Boom 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 by the Venga Boys. <laughs> If you follow it, every two minutes in your Twitter feed, you will see a line from that, from that song. Um, that's a useful service you may wish to indulge in, you know? It's just finished, so it's going to start around again at the beginning of the top song. Um, so there's lots of bots on Twitter. This is just a random list of bots that exist. There's like 300 here, there's, there's many, many more. This just happens to be a random list of bots I'd found. Um, so I've been interested in bots for a while now, and I've been like seriously interested in it from the beginning of this year. And I've been running this kind of thing where I've just have been tweeting about the bot of the day. Um, so not every day, not even always once a day, but every so often I'll tweet about a bot and kind of try to explain why it's interesting on, on Twitter. Uh, this is kind of the talk version of that series of tweets. So <laughs> if you search for bot of the day, you can see a different version of this talk stretched out over several months <laughs> in fewer characters. Um, so what are bots good for? What are, what's interesting about them? So one of the things I really love about bots... Oh, sorry, I was just seeing how the mass connect for is going. I'm, I'm on moon side, so I think moon has pretty got a pretty commanding position, <laughs> and I'm for that. Um, so what are bots good for? They're good for poetry. This is a bot I really love. It's, it's called Poem EXE. A faint yellow rose, my heart, shudder and tremble. Washing the saucepans, it looks very important by the swollen river. Um, and obviously it's just taking various kind of poetic phrases and combining them together and sometimes it doesn't really work and sometimes it does and sometimes it, it feels properly good. And I think an important thing I bring about this is that the way in which this is good is not about the programming, it's not about the fact it's a Twitter bot so much as, as much as somebody has very carefully selected poetic phrases that could fit together there. Like I think often, the creation of bots is a job for poets rather than programmers. Um, so this is another bot I really like. This is a bot that I've kind of had enter into my inner monologue. Every so often I'll just be standing there and I'll have a kind of phrase go through my head and I'm like, that's a phrase that would be tweeted by Feelings.js. Um, I'm feeling close to a sharp typography. At the moment I'm feeling like a membrane. Now I feel like a monistic ablution above a demon. Now I'm feeling like a homoerotic femininity inside a pluralist. <laughs> um, or like found poetry as well. Like, so this is, this is ROM text. This search video games ROMs. Uh, like a, Shima has like a big archive of ROMs. It searches through them and tries to find a block of English text within the code inside that. So usually that's just a bit of text that's embedded within it to be displayed later <laughs> on. And so sometimes it kind of comes into this kind of like found poetry. Delay on, get home in, rent, vous attempts, place the, floater, just move the normal demioxes, block across, oh. Um, well, sometimes it's just, you know, stuff you can kind of see where it has come from. <laughs> Hi, Susan, have a nice day, wash your mouth. <laughs> um, but it's kind of found poetry and the kind of random finding of it and the fact that a robot has found this and thought, hey, this might be interesting and posted it up and kind of people's responses to that I find kind of interesting. Another thing they're good for is kind of providing these kind of little oases of calm or of, of difference in your Twitter feed. So this is a bot I've made called Unicode Garden, which makes these kind of little little gardens out of Unicode characters. So it's it's not even it's not even words. It's it's kind of getting into more like 
sculptural stuff or kind of interested in the, the pictures or the abstract kind of stuff of this. Um, so yeah, it just tweets and there's like some, some that are emoji. Um, and so there's other ones kind of made like infinite desert, which just generates a different desert every three hours. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of a, just a really calming thing to have kind of interrupting arguments about whatever thing people are arguing about on Twitter. Um, or this one, which, which is one of my favorites um, by a bot maker called Katie Rose Pipkin, who I'm a massive fan of, uh, called Tiny Starfields, which just is a series of stars. Um, and, and I'm going to draw, draw attention to this a bit more, but also notice the follower count for this bot. It's got uh, 53 thousand Twitter followers and each one of these bots each one of these tweets that's just randomly generated by a script she has running on a server somewhere is retweeted like 200 times like I really like the idea that there's enough people who've just seen the output of this bot and went yes yes I'm really glad this exists and it's just a little affirmation for beauty in the world and and it could also come into like so bots kind of again moving away from this like this is a cave bot made by Ian Snyder which is just some bots, some kind of beautiful landscapes. Again, this is kind of getting into generating images and embedding them in bots, which, which is also kind of possible. Um, and so there's a bunch of these bots that kind of do different, make images on Twitter. There's kind of, there was a wave of bots that were kind of image bots where you could tweet at them with an image and they'd take in that image and they'd, they'd mangle it and glitch it out or do some, apply some effect to it. And then they respond with that image. And then somebody figured out that if you added multiple bots into the same tweet, one of them would take it in and mangle it and then respond to it. And that would be a mention to another one. And they'd kind of respond to each other until eventually people worked out you needed to put a random chance that they'd stop responding so that it didn't carry on forever and crash servers. Um, but they still respond every so often. And somebody saw that and thought, yeah, that's really interesting. I really like it when these bots are talking together. And so made something that found when these bots talk to each other and made GIFs out of the results of that conversation. So this is a bot that automatically looks at the results of other bots' conversations and makes GIFs out of them automatically. Um, and you know, like this is a kind of beautiful kind of service of it. Um, and it can, bots can also give you a kind of perspective on different places. Like, so this is uh, one, in fact, Ed. Hey. Yeah, what? Yeah, I mean, you didn't make it, but I saw it by you. Um, so this shows, it picks a random place in the world and shows you like a satellite photo of that. So it's kind of like you look at it and it's kind of this puzzle as to where it is or what you're looking at. And it's also like a perspective on a different part of the world. And the randomness also feels important. Like the fact that it kind of appears from without context and it kind of interrupts your kind of local view of whatever thing people are arguing about on Twitter with a picture of Nunavut in Canada or a picture of Juba, South Sudan. Um, or kind of, and that kind of feels gentle and beautiful, but it can also feel creepy in the, in the case of this bot, which, so somebody's found a bunch of uh, webcams that are broadcasting unsecured, probably unpublicized on the internet. He's found a bunch of these, and he's went through and he's filtered out the ones that look a bit too creepy, to leave in the ones that are only kind of creepy. And then this bot randomly goes, samples an image from it, and posts it up with this kind of glitched out text. So a lot of these webcams, people, the people who put them up aren't aware that these are webcams that they've put up online. Mm. But you know, you follow it, and you just kind of got these random glimpses of, and like he filters the images to make them look kind of especially creepy and kind of aim for this kind of aesthetic effect. Um, and like some of them are just dark because you know he doesn't check whether it's nighttime that where the camera is but it kind of gives a really different aesthetic effect. And it's kind of interesting how that's achieved through the kind of glitched out names, through the glitched out words. And when he initially published it, he didn't sign it. So it was just a random account that was doing this creepy thing and you couldn't quite work out what it was doing. So another thing you can do with, game, with bots is you can play games. Um, so this is Dungeon Crawler. Um, you've got this little kitty cat who is in a dungeon and uh, you tweet up, down, left, right to navigate him, and eventually he finds the stairs and climbs up, and he continues going until he's reached the surface, at which point he falls down a hole. <laughs> you have to start again. Um, and it's kind of interesting that this uses the fact that Twitter is an interactive medium. It uh, exists in your feed, you can respond to it. It's, it's, a bot. It's, a, it's a computer game you can play, but you're playing it inherently socially. There's, there's no way to play this one privately. You're inherently playing it in collaboration with a bunch of other people. And a bunch of people who play it end up tagging in other bots that will generate random nonsense when you tag them in the hopes that they'll then 
tweet out a random thing that then the bots are controlling it as well. Um, or like this, um, which is, you know, there's an adventure. A thief has stolen my dagger. At the forest with 10 HP, should I go to the lake or the swamp? Tweet at it with lake or tweet at it with swamp, and it'll go to one of those places and more of the adventure will unfold. Um, maybe you'll die, maybe you won't. Uh, or this, which is explicitly Zork. Uh, the game Zork has been hooked up, so there's a Twitter front end to it, so you tweet at it with a command, it'll enter that into Zork and play it. So you're playing it with everyone else, this kind of collaborative game of Zork out in public. Um, and the fact that it's out in public feels like an interesting thing. It feels like an interesting twist on it. So yeah, Twitter bots can also be used for jokes. Um, sometimes they're kind of automated jokes, which don't always work. So I don't know if you've seen this image, image macro before. My desires are unconventional, so show me. <laughs> A screenshot of an Imga thread? <laughs> My desires are unconventional, so show me. <laughs> Poor cat. <laughs> My desires are unconventional, so show me. <laughs> um, or this one, uh, abhorrent sex bot, which randomly generates uh, terrible erotica. As they spanked my orifice, my inner sh Shakti whispered hoarsely like a salamander. <laughs> I want your... <laughs> Sorry for children's <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, what are you waiting for, he sang. I want to stroke you like a rhinoceros. <laughs> Or like again, you know, like sex is a kind of common thing. So this is a bot that takes uh, descriptions from, wi from WikiHow, you know, that common way of knowing how to do a thing very competently and reliably, and uh, repurposes them as sex. Sexed. I remove my remaining paste using my cloth damped with cold water. <laughs> Sexed. You purchase my violin as I tighten my bow. Sext, you make me go through my list of things that interest you while I go through my motions even if you don't really feel like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean obviously like sex is always kind of funny and that kind of thing. Um, but you know, like uh, a lot of the humour here kind of arises from a weird combination of different corpuses and like, you know, the poetry in this is choosing a corpus that fits especially well, like finding the wiki how just reads like terrible sex. Uh, sex is like an amazing discovery and I think that's a kind of really profound act of poetry actually and is also really funny at the same time. Um, so bots can also be used to be really irritating. You may have come across things like this if you tweet uh, sneak peek with an A in peek then this bot might at you and say hey you've got that wrong. Um, which yeah I think is just incredibly irritating and I, if you're thinking about making bots don't make a bot like this, that's, that's my advice. Um, so one reason that bots are kind of exciting, uh, compared to games, I guess I should bring this back to games slightly, is that you can make them quite quickly. Depending on how complicated the thing you're trying to make is, you can make them quite quickly. So I've made a site called uh, Cheap Bots Done Quick, um, which you can see here, which allows you to make bots really quickly. And so I'm kind of gonna show off again um, about a bot that I made whilst on a bus to go to an island uh, to live tweet that bus journey because people were talking about live tweeting it and that seemed, sounded really tedious to me and I just made this site so I was like whatever I can make a bot to do that I'll just do that um, so I made this entire I registered the Twitter account took the header picture whilst we stopped at a service station and then programmed the bot to tweet bad you know live tweeting things feeling a bit car sick oh my god more trees <laughs> That was an amazing weekend. I changed it to change the text on the way back and ran it again. Um, and William Pugh ran it on as well. I'm going to give a little reading of this bot because it, the majesty of this bot is only properly appreciated if you read it out in the style of a very sincere but really inept poet. Uh, what? The sight of snaps of mossy green bits? The call to aid of another log beneath the sensual question of twigs to be? Do you know the sight of flappy green flaps? I do. 
The sound of a classic trunk of bark beneath the tearful dew of nature's miniature paper umbrellas. What? The sight of dearest leaves? The smell of an aged oak beneath the sadness of the swaying spread of leaves. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he also made that on a bus, which, you know, I think is real testament to his writing prowess. Um, so I'm going to go through some other kind of bots made, um, yeah, using this tool, um, mainly to show off and also just to kind of, again, show the kind of range of stuff. So this is made by Siobhan, who is, who is here. Hey. Um, which tells you cakes you can make, like uh, make a cake with raisins and despair, a dash of cinnamon, and some custard. Uh, let me scroll over. Or this one, which was made by my friend Sarah, which tells you uh, things you can think, how Foley artists do things. Often, Foley artists will use the loose leaf Earl Grey tea to recreate the sound of a badger rummaging for food. <laughs> Often, Foley artists will use a bunch of cats taped together to replicate the sound of prom night. Uh, or this, which was made by Dick Hogg, who some of you might know who worked on Hocum. Um, at the weekend, it's the Hastings Vintage Ashtray Market. Also, Saturday is the beginning of Hastings Eel Week. Um, which again, I, I don't know, I, I think I like about this is the fact that he's deliberately taking the piss out of a custom of Hastings, like, town, like, village people to just promote a random thing each weekend um, and the fact that you can make something that's hyper local and hyper specific and hyper is about a thing that's relevant to you but it might not be relevant to the wider world and you can do that quickly and you can do that kind of creatively and it can then be a thing that like, delights and surprises you for time to come I think that's a kind of powerful thing and, and part of that is about the fact that Bots are kind of embedded in this context where people are already hanging out. It's not a thing you have to go away and find. It's just a thing that you kind of end up swimming in. So this is actually just my Twitter feed. I'm going to scroll down until I can find a bot. So yeah, Unicode Tarot, which uh, gives you tarot readings based on Unicode characters. Or Dungeon Bot, which uh, generates a random dungeon and then tweets something more sleep. There's Mr. Tree, non-hashtag. Uh, Tiny star fields. It just mixes in with whatever other people are tweeting about, whatever other stuff is going on in your life. It just kind of mixes in and becomes kind of part of your life. It becomes part of the texture of what you're seeing on the internet. And I think that's that's a really important and powerful thing you can do. What are you laughing at? <laughs> um, so yeah, like more examples of this is uh, there's an amazing cat called an amazing bot called Generate a Cat, which if you tweet at it will generate a cat for you. And the thing I really love about Generate a Cat is the fact that everyone's really polite to it. <laughs> like you know, if someone sends a little sparkle, it generates like a magic sparkle. It generates a cat, and they're like, thanks, thank you. And that that feels important, you know, like you're being polite to the bots. This is the cutest thing on Twitter. I'd like a cat, please. It generates a cat. Thank you. <laughs> It generates a cat, and Rob is like, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure I like that cat, you know? So he generates another cat for him. <laughs> you know, and like, an important thing there is, you know, you play acting when you're reacting to a bot like this. Um, you're just, you know, play acting, you're kind of engaging, you're pretending it's a human, and that feels important, and it feels important that you're kind of engaging with it that way, you're giving it humanity, you're giving it the benefit of doubt as an intelligent entity. Uh, you know, like, so often in video games, you're like, I don't know, you treat characters that people have spent a lot of time trying to invest in humanity and feeling like compassionate characters and you know because you're trying to redo the thing you like you just treat them as a box that moves that way in regards to a stimulus that's kind of how you have to do it whereas instead you have something that's a lot stupider but it's fun if you're hanging out with your friends to treat the robots like they're your friends too you know you can just get the players you get the users to just do the work for you or this bot which is a uh, a famous fake tweet team, which was on The Daily Show, I think. Um, you know, it just responds to people, talks to people, is dead now, but you know. And the kind of community that gathers around this bot, these bots are also kind of interesting. So this is the bot ally hashtag, which is like a lot of people who make bots or treat bots like humans, and it's kind of, there's a, there's a culture involved in that, and I can't say really, I can say lots of nice things about the community involved and the kind of openness and creativity and the enthusiasm they all have for stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so another reason to, to make bots instead of games is that, you know, like I, like I said before, you don't have to seek them out to see them. And part of that also means that you're not necessarily 
the people who read your bots are not necessarily people who identify as bot fans. <laughs> there are bot fans. They're usually people also making bots. But you know, like so, Big Bang Clock, for example. <laughs> how many people like this is anyway? Ha hands up if you follow this or know this account before. <laughs> it's got half a million followers, who are presumably largely in London. So. <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> oh. oh, that's lovely. Um, yeah, but so, you know, like this just comes along and just reminds you what the time is. It's kind of like a cheeky thing and a, a nice thing to kind of mix in to your Twitter feed. But it's, it's not followed by people who necessarily care about bots. They care about the idea that Big Ben has a Twitter account that goes bong. <laughs> You know, every time the big big man actually goes wrong, like that's that's the audience for it. It's not people who identify as bots, and because it's mixed in with a Twitter feed, people just retweet it, and it comes across it, and there's kind of a natural the natural discovery mechanism. User acquisition is really easy. <laughs> um, or like a Sorting Hat, um, which came out, which you you tweet at it, and or you have to follow it, and it generates a tweet for you where it generates a Sorting Hat poem for you, and it gives you your house. And like, there's lots of people who just really enjoy that, and that's that's a thing that people really enjoy, not necessarily because they enjoy generative poetry. You know, it's it's a terrific accomplishment of generative poetry, but people like it because it gives you your Hogwarts house. <laughs> <laughs> um, or every word. There was a massive kerfuffle about every word, which ran for seven years, tweeting every single word in whatever dictionary he picked when he began tweeting about it. Um, and I still remember the drama that happened when it turned out that the last word in the English language dictionary he used was not Zymergy, but a Claire came afterwards because E with an accent follows afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone was like, what? What is happening? And then it carried on for a while until it finally hit its week. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I'm just, I've got no actual like, main point here, I just think this is really lovely. It just tweets every bird, every bird that we know about, the scientific name of them. Uh, so it's currently up to the letter M. There's, I think, probably about 50,000 birds that we know of. I think that's just wonderful. Yeah, there's some, there's three new birds since since I loaded this a few hours ago. I assume it posts like every, every half hour? Every half hour, a new bird. Um, so kind of one of the final reasons I really love bots is I just really love, and this is kind of nihilistic actually, but I really love like the kind of static and contextlessness. This is just actually me appreciating it as a consumer, as a, like a reader of them. But I really love just, I don't know, like the aesthetic effect of lots of like contextless, static, meaninglessness kind of adding in. So, you know, every word kind of has that, or Library of Babel, which generates like just random things you might find inside um, the Library of Babel books from the Borges short story. Uh, or this, it's just like just random junk and kind of art, and it doesn't quite make sense, but it's got just enough meaning that your brain tries to grip onto it and it kind of skips over it, or, you know, just random noise here, or these kind of mazes and Unicode patterns and shapes you weren't quite aware were actually in Unicode, or this, which goes even further with that, of just junk and garbage, and it just kind of overwhelms you, and I find that kind of static. I don't know, I really enjoy having that inserted into my feed. Um, so yeah, like that's, that's, I guess, my overview of, of bots and kind of the reasons that I like them. But a kind of larger point I want to make is that it's not actually so much about bots and it's not actually so much about video games being rubbish. I don't know, maybe they are. Who knows? <laughs> um, instead, it's kind of more about, uh, you know, an important point I want to make is just bots and video games and kind of generative poetry and all this kind of other stuff are kind of different points within a kind of larger thing that's actually the thing I'm interested in at the same time. Like, and the thing I'm actually interested in is is just kind of the interaction between technology and humans and how we relate to technology and things you can do to create particular experiences for people. And sometimes that's best expressed through a video game, sometimes it's best expressed through bots, or like this is uh, different things made with become a great artist that people have posted on Tumblr. I think this is a thing that automatically creates them, or maybe it's just a dude who really loves the game. Um, or that's a link that doesn't work. This is a thing that randomly generates uh, recipes. 
kind of abstracted recipes. This is a, a novel someone generated, which has a single sentence for every hour, every minute in a 24-hour clock. Uh, this is a chat book of generative poetry, again, by Katie Rose Pipkin, with these kind of beautiful generated art and these beautiful Unicode poems. Um, and it just, there's this whole world of interesting, exciting stuff that exists outside of the traditional confines of games and the traditional confines of bots. And I don't know, I guess I'd encourage people to explore outside of that, both creating and consuming. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to carry on making video games, though, because you can get paid for them a lot easier. <laughs>